Drag Racing fan, Monday morning racer here at strutmasters.com, the headquarters in Roxboro, North Carolina. And we've caught up with Mike Booker. Now, Mike, look, man, it's great to have you here, but why are you here at Strutmasters? Well, and I must have to start from the beginning, but actually Chip is helping me um, with a Supercom dragster that I'm going to use to represent Hope Over Heroin, and I'm going to be taking it into high schools, high schools, prisons, and Hope Over Heroin rallies, and I'm going to be using the car to turn kids from drugs. And so that's why I'm here specifically now. He's, he, he gave me the dragster, and I'm picking up the engine for it. Awesome. So Chip Lofton, owner of Strut Masters, helping out with Hope Over Heroin in the program of the Supercomp Dragster engine. Awesome. And that's not all that you're in, though. I mean, you're in a much bigger, faster car. You're in Top Alcohol Dragster in the Correct. NHRA. Correct. So talk to me a little bit about Top Alcohol Dragster, the class, this in-class rivalry that there is with the style of cars that are there, and how fast you going, man? Well, my best so far is 531, 275 miles an hour. I'm in Robin Samsel's car, Robin and Tony Samsel. They're great people. Um, I would have had a 520 at U.S. Nationals, but um, Dwayne Shields was at 1,000 foot. He was running a 520, and I, and I wasn't going to beat him, so I shut off. It would have been about a 527, he told me. And so I've gone 275. Um, top alcohol, you have the injected nitro, which low-end torque leaves on an idle. You don't shift. And then you have the, the blown alcohol that leaves at a high idle, shift twice. They're actually harder to drive, which I'm actually starting to feel intrigued, like I want to get some experience in one of those. But um, two very different cars that compete together. Yeah, it's great that that class has got that parity between the two types. It's, you know, you, you can go one route, you can go the other route. You've, you've got competition between them. The staging procedures are different. Uh, matter of fact, you had an issue at a race with staging issues with a fellow competitor that you didn't realize until afterwards, so break that down for me. Right. That was the first round of the Gator Nationals. I'm Sean Cowie, a great race, racer, and um, and it was just, you know, there's, there's a, there was a lot of history that I wasn't, I didn't realize, and, um, you know, I was just told by the crew chief, you know, don't light the second bulb, or don't, don't turn the fuel on and step off the clutch so he lights the second bulb, and that kind of had a domino effect. I ended up winning, but um, you know, it, it, was, it was, I didn't realize there was an issue because what happens is sometimes either side can let the other one kind of um, delay, you know, whether our fuel's on and we're off the clutch or their engine's up, can cause problems either way. And I had no clue about any of that stuff. And so I just did what I was told. We ended up winning and, um, and anyway, Sean Cowie's a great guy, great racer. It was my first, time ever staging a national event and going down the track so it was a big deal for me you know but anyway folks look you might be familiar with top fuel you might be familiar with funny car look top alcohol dragster is not a class just to leave the stands for it's definitely one to stay in the stands and watch Mike, what do you think the NHRA has got to do to bring some more exposure to top alcohol dragster and even at the regional events because Folks, you can catch top alcohol dragster machines going over 270 miles per hour at smaller tracks, smaller venues around the country, and they're not at a national event. Well, and I, I call it a professional, it's a professional class they call sportsmen. And um, they're not toys, they're ridiculously fast. They're the next fastest thing after Top Fuel and Funny Car. And um, I think, you know, Warren Evans does this um, um, Drag Racer TV, um, Will Hanna does the Top Alcohol, and, and, and both of those are giving it exposure. And, um, you know, anyone who's going to race Top Fuel and Funny Car, they're going to come through Top Alcohol, Dragster, and Top Alcohol, Funny Car. So NHRA needs to encourage it, and um, obviously we're not the big show at the biggest races, but at the regionals we are. So Columbus this year, National Trail, July 16th, 17th, and 18th, I'm going to be representing Hope Over Heroin and Strutmaster. Um, Cheb is you know, going to help me with that, and I'm going to um, race there. And that's going to be interesting because they're combining the JEGS Sports Nationals with the regional. We'll be the fastest cars there, but because there's not many races, there's probably going to be 20 top alcohol cars going for eight slots. So that'll be interesting. Definitely will be interesting. And for you fans that may not know, at the regional level, and with the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series, you can collect points in a different way. You don't have to just go to national meets. You Correct. go to the regional meets, and you can get in some interesting modes of someone can show up and block people from getting points and eliminating them. So it's quite intriguing at that level 
in drag racing? Well, in national events, there's a higher stress level, but for our class, we're kind of pushed to the side a little bit. But at the regionals, you know, we're the fastest cars and given a little more priority. And it's a little more relaxed environment. I actually enjoy the regionals, I would say, more, even though the national events get more exposure and it's more big time, but, you know, bigger crowds, more people in the stands. But the regionals are neat. I like them you know, a lot. Definitely, the regionals are neat. If you're not catching the regionals as a drag racing fan, you need to do that. Well, look, I want you to understand, Mike just didn't happen into drag racing. He does have a drag racing pedigree, and I want to take the opportunity right now. Mike, explain to me who your dad was, how important your dad was to you in drag racing. And, uh, folks, his dad is in the Don, Don Garlitz Drag Racing Museum. In fact, at what's behind us, the toolbox, came from the Drag Racing Museum, and his dad's car is there. So the man has got some drag racing history behind him. Well, and he's in the Drag Race Hall of Fame. He was in the 2007 class. And um, Chip had won this at an auction at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And Garlitz had people sign, and he always has me sign for my dad. And uh, but my dad was Jim Booker. He had a Chevy in Top Fuel, the only Chevy to have the national record and win a national event. I was three days old at my first race. I was supposed to follow in his footsteps and drive the car when I turned 18. And there's been a lot of Chevys in Top Fuel, which is unique about my dad. There was one moment in history where a Chevy was actually faster than all the Hemis. It didn't last long, but he was the one, because usually they're, they're behind the Hemis, but this was one moment in time they were with him. And the car was super light. I weighed 80 pounds less than my dad, and I was going to drive top fuel at 18, and then he died when I was 15. And um, I was devastated, but that's what led me to ask the Lord in my heart. That changed me forever. You know, a peace and a joy came into me that was life-changing. I wanted to tell the drag racing world that message and the Lord said, they're going to be a pastor. And so 40 years I had to wait to be able to do this. And now it's kind of like, you know, like my father in heaven saying, I'm going to let you do this, but I'm using it for a purpose, you know, promoting hope over heroin. It's a ministry that helps addicts. And, um, and I, my favorite thing is to put little kids in a car and, and talk to them about not touching drugs. It's great to help addicts, but I'd rather prevent addicts, prevent them from becoming an addict. So the dragster, the A-Fuel, and the super comp, soon to be super comp car, um, are going to be er, er, for that purpose. And um, I had a kid find me on Facebook afterwards. I let him sit in the car. He was 15. He said it was the best day of his life. You know, so it's kind of a big deal when you bring him into the pits and let him sit in the car and, you know. It definitely is a big deal. I mean, that can make someone's day. I mean, it would make my day as an adult, and I'm sure many as you as well, uh, to get to sit in such, well, they're racing machines. They're pure racing machines is what they are. And Mike, look, it's great that you've got that drag racing pedigree. It's also great that you uh, have a relationship with your Lord and Savior. And I've got to ask, how does ministry and drag racing combine and work out? And what are the challenges of being in ministry and trying to drag race at the same well, time? Well, in, in my heart, you know, from the beginning, it's been, Lord, I'm putting you first, and it's ministry first. And the thing is, I'm a pastor. I'm not a drag racer. But as a pastor, when I tell people to share their faith, you know, I need to do it too. Most pastors, their background is tennis, fishing, or golf, and that's where they would do it. I just happen to have a unique opportunity. And the challenge is this. I got to keep the Lord and ministry first. So it's my relationship with the Lord, my wife, my kids, ministry to the church as a pastor, and then the racing. And sometimes there's a battle. And so far, when there's been conflicts, you know, I put the other things ahead of racing. And, um, and, I, and the Bible says, you know, God says, he who honors me, I will honor. And I've told him, Lord, I'm going to put you first ahead of the racing. The racing is to serve a purpose. I'm not going to race just to race. So the challenge is, you know, I mean, what if somebody came along and said, hey, we're going to sponsor you to do 20 races? Can't do it. I did one the first year, two the next year, last year seven. Seven's probably too many. Probably five is about right. I can, you know, because Sunday's a work day and they race on Sundays. And so... I cannot let this become ahead of ministry, family, wife. And so far, it hasn't. That's awesome, Mike. Now, fans, I want you to know that with what Mike is doing, it's, gone, it, it's definitely going beyond drag racing, and I'm glad to hear that racing is having an impact beyond just racing itself. I love racing, but it, I love it even more when racing does more than just racing. And that is definitely happening with hope over heroin. 
Mike, look, drop a few stories on me or just one that you really, really like to tell of your program making an impact in the community. Well, um, you meant on the track an impact or just... Um, Wherever. Well, because okay, here's the thing, you know, I, I, I've, I've been able to talk to people about Hope Over Heroin at the races and about my relationship with the Lord. The next step is going into high schools, which I have numerous open doors, which would have happened this year, except it all shut down. Also, Bill Glass Prison Ministry I'm going to be going into, and then the Hope Over Heroin rallies. And, um, you know, um, the way I went from, you know, I was a Racers for Christ chaplain, and I would give out my messages um, at the races, and Brian Crowd and Antron Brown are the ones that helped me get my license. And that happened three years ago. It was in Anthony DeSero's car. When I got that, I found out that um, you can actually pay to drive people's cars. And so I had, um, you know, one spot. The first sponsor was Be a Sweetie's Candy, Tom Scheinman. He said, I'll sponsor you to do a race. That was the first year. And, um, and that, that, it was great to be able to do it. It was great to get my license. The next year um, was with the Dreers. And um, what's interesting is I actually had a dream way back, you know, 1978 is when I came to the Lord. I, I walked away from racing 1988. I was away from until 1998. I actually had a dream that was so real that um, I was actually sitting in a car, tears going down my face, and I felt the presence of God beyond words. And I'm like, what's that? What is that? Am I supposed to race or what? Well, I started getting involved with the Race for Christ, giving up my Bible studies. Um, Pat Garlitz would listen to them. Um, Brian Karate, Antron, Tony Schumacher, Larry Dixon. There was, there's like 70 drivers right now that I give out the Bible studies to. And, um, and then Antron and Brian said, hey, we're going to help you get your license. And um, So when I drove for the Dreers, and this is probably, you know, this is a highlight as far as just an event on the track. Um, my first race ever staging against another car was against Marty Thacker. He runs a 542.9. I run a 542.3. He run, he has an 043 reaction. I had an 024. I tell people I was waiting 40 years to be able to do that. And when I pulled around the corner and I heard Bob Uncover um, announcing that I had won, I actually sat in the car crying and I felt just the presence of God beyond words. And that was 2018. That was the exact dream that I had in 1998. And um, it was just, it was like, I felt like it was just God saying, you know, good boy. He was letting me do something and I'm using it for him. So that, as far as the event on the track and having an impact, that was huge. And the only other one would have been, you know, the next year, which is last year, the Gator Nationals. Um, I drove Bobby Everett's car. I'm Tippy Pierce, great crew chief, wonderful guy, um, Christian guy and a guy named Joe Glukowski, who was a friend of my dad's, who was on his crew and helped him. He finds me in Dallas, and he basically tells me he wants to sponsor me to do a race. Went into being the Gator Nationals, and my dad was runner up there twice. And so I show up there, no way we have a chance to win. The, the car hadn't run for a while. There was a lot of little bugs and issues. We qualify 16th, and that's where, you know, first round, Sean Kelly, only 17th time in history, number 16 beat number one, went to the final, ended up losing to Megan Meyer, but that really put what I'm doing and hope over heroin on the map because there's people who like what I'm doing. I don't gotta go around begging for sponsors. I just say, look, here's what I'm doing. I'm using racing, you know, for this purpose. And every now and then someone says, you know, I wanna be a part of that. I wanna help. And that gave me more exposure than ever. And um, that was 2019. And halfway through the year, I ended up going over to um, Robin Sampson and Tony Sampson. And I just wanna mention them because, you know, they're just very calm, very, you know, they explain things real clear, and there's just such peace with that team. And they're doing some neat things, and I know that car is going to be really good. Well, Mike, I'm glad to hear that racing is making such a great impact. For anyone that might want to support you and hope over heroin, where do they go? Where do they find extra information? Well, there's on Facebook, there's a Hope Over Heroin Dragster page. If you put Hope Over Heroin, you can actually go to the Ministry of Hope Over Heroin. But if you put Dragster, that's the site that I've set up. And, um, you know, or you just find me on Facebook, you know, Mike Booker. I'm the only Mike Booker on there. You know, you'll see Pastor, 14 Kids. Um, I, want, I do want to mention, you know, like I told you, whenever you mention a sponsor, you got to kind of, you know, get them all in there. Ashley was a big help from the beginning, a realty warehouse. Um, obviously, I mentioned Brian Karate with Master Pizza. Dave Nelson, Nelson Trucking, his son was going through Frank Holly School when I was. And from the beginning, he's like, I want to be a part of what you're doing. A Mufflers for Less is local to Cleveland. And um, I also Cleveland and, Mus mufflers for less in Cleveland. Yep, and um, and I have a couple other local sponsors: Amsoil, um, Unicontrol, Floor King, 
and Strace and Smith, and they're all people who believe in what I'm doing. They like what I'm doing. Um, last year, I ended up adding, a, met at SEMA, a, a guy that has a product called the Glosser, Bill Stewart. And um, he was a major sponsor last year for a couple of races, and he's going to continue a partial sponsor. And then, like I said, mo more recently was um, Chip, and Gainesville was supposed to be the first race with Strutmaster on the car. Where I was mixing nitro, and all of a sudden they said, pack up, there's no race. And I thought, this has got to be a, a practical joke. I left out one. TFC Trucking, you know, the super comp car that I'm running. This um, Gene, um, Gene Lampshire has a super comp car, and he's helped me build this one. And I had actually spoke at a chapel and shared what I'm doing. And he came up, his face was lit up. He said, I love this. And he's been a huge support. And TFC actually stands for um, Trucking for Christ. And, um, you know, everyone helping me, for the most part, it's the ministry. And they have a heart for the Lord and reaching people. And that's the common thread with everybody. And Chip um, definitely does with Strutmaster. You know, he's, he's on board completely, you know, from day one. So, well... Definitely from Chip Lofton, the owner of strutmasters.com. We know that he's on board. It's so good to have others on board. Look, if you're out there, let me say this. I don't care where you stand on whether Jesus Christ is God or not. The man is helping people overcome heroin or not ever get hooked on heroin. That is a good thing. So if you can pitch in, if you have a desire to help him, go find him out, find this team out, get more exposure for this team and help people that they truly have hope over heroin. Now, Mike, I know we also have another hope, though. We got a hope of going back racing pretty soon. How excited well, about that? And, are and you? the next one, you know, my, my A race the last three years has been the Norwalk Regional. And Bill Bader, four years ago, gave me 30 passes, then 50 passes, then 70. Last year, 250 passes to bring kids out and hope over heroin. This year, it was to be a thousand. And it, and it all fell through because of the virus. Well, Columbus National Trail is having a race and I went and met the track owner Jay Livingston and he's willing to do what Bill Bader was going to do. So he's going to allow us to bring Hope Over Heroin people out there and do an outreach. The issue was can they have fans and he just found out Monday they're going to allow them to have fans. They've opened the track but no spectators. But hopefully it'll continue by July 17th, 18th, 19th. They're combining the JEG Sports Nationals and the Norwalk Regional and he's going to allow me to bring that ministry out there. So we want to do things like, you know, maybe food, like a, like a barbecue for the racers on Friday night. But it's all to promote Hope Over Heroin and what they do because that ministry really does help people and I've seen the proof of it. They'll have probably 30 people out there who are former addicts and man, they're really, they're really changed. And so that's what I'm promoting. And that's someone to support. The racing is fine, but look up hopeoverheroin.com and you can support them because they are having an impact. I am just a billboard promoting them, you know, so. Well, you're doing a good job at the promoting, being behind the wheel. Man, how excited are you to get behind the wheel again? You know, I happened to have to go, I went to a pastor's meeting in Indianapolis last week and, and I drove through Marion where the drag strip drive is parked, that's where the samples are. And I can practice all day in my mind, but I'm like, I gotta sit in this thing. Because the last race for me was Labor Day US Nationals and so, I am very ready to get back into it. There is an addiction factor to nitro. It's not heroin, and it, you know, it's not, but there is an addiction to nitro. When you hear that thing go from alcohol to nitro sitting behind you and everything starts shaking, like I want to feel that again soon. I hear you, man. I hear you. I, just the few times I've been able to film a fuel car, it's a whole other experience from anything else that happens to go down the, the drag strip. So I know you're looking forward to getting back there and go ahead, man, go ahead. You know, just one side note, you know, I mentioned my dad and um, when I left to come down here, my mom's in hospice and people can just pray for her. She took a major downturn in the last, last couple of days. And so that's kind of, a, kind of a bummer. She knows the Lord, I know she has peace. She's been very happy staying with us, but that's something that's kind of on my mind. And you know, just if you think of it, just pray for her, my mom. So. Definitely folks, pray for Mike's mom. So are there going to be schedule craziness with the Lucas Oil guys as there is with the Mellow Yellow guys, you know, because it's the Mellow Yellow guys are about to have a rigorous tour. Uh, is it very I, similar? I, for the I, Lucas I think guys? They, they, they've cut it way back. And, you know, it's interesting. I always thought, you know, I could never run for a championship because there's just too many races. You had to run like, you know, 10 out of seven. You can count for the national men. And it was like seven out of five or five out of seven for the other regionals. And right now it's so reduced. It's like, man, oh man, if there was ever a 
a, a chance to go for a championship at a less expense, I mean, they're really cutting it way back. So actually, whoever wins it is going to, you know, you're not going to have to do as well in as many races. It's actually going to be a lot cheaper. It's not the craziness that the national events have. They do have them. It's going to be a lot of races in a short amount of time, but not the big total races that existed before. You know, it's cut back a lot. Definitely, this year's been cut back a lot. As I've been saying to a lot of folks, 2020 is the year with an asterisk next to it uh, to explain, hey, we had this pandemic. Let me ask you this, Mike. With the schedules being cut, do you think that this year, 2020, a year with an asterisk next to, next to it, do you think that's going to make the championships, whether it's the Mellow Yellow or whether it's the Lucas Oil Series, that much more valuable? Or is everyone always going to say, well, that was 2020 and look differently at those champions? The bottom line is, you know, I don't care if you show up at a race and you, and you get in as an alternate and you end up winning. Hey, if you win, you win. And no matter what happens, whoever's the top alcohol champion, they're the world champion. And I wouldn't look down on it. And if I won it, I wouldn't think any less of it. I think it's going to be the same. You know, the bottom line is you got to be better than everyone else for a certain number of races. And so less room for error this year. That's definitely how I think about it. I think this year it will, I think it at least should elevate a, those champions because you're going to have so many races back to back or you have less opportunities to win and to gather those points. You know, the ch champions of 2020, I think, uh, should be those that, you know, people in racing history later on go like, that guy, that gal got it done in that year. It was a tough environment to race. Definitely, yeah. definitely a tough environment to race. Well, look, Mike, it's been great having you here in this environment here at the strutmasters.com headquarters in the showroom. And look, closing out, I'm going to give you the last few words and to your fans how they can find you and uh, what they should expect when they encounter Mike there in the pits. Well, you know, I'm there to minister to people, whether it's fans, kids, if someone's dealing with addiction or they got a relative dealing with it, come and talk to me. You know, if you got kids that want to sit in the car, my focus, you know, my if I was sponsored by Pepsi and that was my focus, I'd promote them. I'm promoting Hope Over Heroin. I'm doing this as a ministry. Every sponsor knows that's the priority. And, you know, you know, pray for me that everything I say and do honors the Lord. You know, I, I'm doing this for something different. I'm racing for something more than racing. And, um, and that's the bottom line. So. Well, there it is, Mike, with the bottom line that he's doing something more than racing for the Lord and helping these addicts out. We'd rather you be hooked on nitro. I know I am. <laughs> Folks, I'm the Monday Morning Racer for strutmasters.com. And until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.